Now, uh, talking about the Middle Eastern region is done. Now, let's proceed towards an important country which is present in the north where we have a war raging for more than two years, something that started in February 2022. And you already know, if you have looked at 2023 prelims question, already questions has been asked with relation to Ukraine and also about a nuclear plant which is present in eastern Ukraine. So again, we are going to use mnemonics to understand what countries border Black Sea. After that, we look at uh, the Russian perspective because NATO expansion towards uh, the eastern European nations is one more news article. So we have to look at Baltic Sea and the countries which are bordering there also. So first, we'll start from Black Sea. Okay, the area where a lot of things are happening, important port locations here, and then we'll proceed north. So here it is. For Black Sea, remember this mnemonic, there are totally uh, six countries which border Black Sea. So visualize Black Tea. And always remember, uh, whenever you want to memorize something, the more ridiculous your imagination is, it, it, it stays in your brain for a longer period of time. So normally people have the habit of dipping biscuits in tea and then eating. But here, instead of a biscuit, you're going to insert a burger. As I told you before, vowels will complete your mnemonics to give you more meaning. It doesn't necessarily represent. So that I've used small letters. Now look at this. You'll totally find six countries. That is, you visualize black tea, a black tea cup. And inside that, instead of a biscuit, you're dipping a burger. So here we go. T stands for a country, Turkey. The only country which borders both Mediterranean Sea and Black Sea. U for Ukraine, like this is the conflict is all about in the last two years. Then we have B standing for Bulgaria. So B, B, U, R. The first R standing for Russia. You can clearly see Russia having a border towards Black Sea. G for a very small country here. Please pay attention. A country called Georgia. Okay, so Georgia has access to Black Sea. And then we have the final R which stands for Romania. So again we go T for Turkey. B for a country called Bulgaria, U for a country called Ukraine, R for a country called Russia, G for a small country in close to the Caucasus Mountains called Georgia, and then we have one more country, R, which stands for Romania. So six countries border Black Sea. Now for two additional locations which make news. This particular region is called as Crimea or Crimean Peninsula. This has been asked already twice in prelims in the last five years. And keep that in mind, along with Crimean Peninsula, you should also note down the presence of a water body called Sea of Azov. Sea of Azov. Now, why is this important? Because please remember that these two seas are not connected. That is, the sea which you've already studied is Black Sea, and the one which you've studied is Sea of Azov. They are not connected, but they are separated by a small water body called the Strait of Kerch. Strait of Kerch, K-E-R-C-H. And uh, during the course of the war, this, this Kerch bridge, uh, which was constructed by Russia, was attacked. So if there is a question, the Strait of Kerch separates which two water bodies, you should be in a position to answer the question. So in the north, we have the Sea of Azov, and in the south, we have Black Sea. So just for that, I just wanted to recollect. And one more important city, which has again gained a lot of relevance in the last two years, is a city in Ukraine called Odessa, O-D-E-S-A. Again, clarity on why this is important. Now, in the last two years, even though the war is going on, United Nations had to make sure that the amount of wheat and sunflower, which is cultivated in Ukraine, had to be transported to other parts of the world, especially to West Africa. Because many West African nations uh, consume uh, commodities, that is food commodities, which are exported from Ukraine. And Ukraine is one of the leading producers of wheat and sunflower globally. In fact, it is the number one producer of sunflower in the world. So coming back to your, that is the current affairs news article again. And coming back to relevance, never forget where Odessa is. O-D-E-S-A. Now we are going north. We are going to another, another uh, current affairs related event where we talk about the expansion of NATO uh, towards the eastern side, where most recently the country of Finland has been admitted as a member. So first, what we're going to understand is what countries in Eastern Europe technically border Russia. So we're going to start from this simple mnemonic, as I told you. Blue. We'll go step by step. Totally, we have seven countries, but first I'll talk about the first five. Because all these five border proper Russia. And as you can clearly see, B stands for a country called Belarus. Please be careful here. The first B which we discussed for Black Sea is Bulgaria. This is different. 
Second country, proper Russia is a country called Latvia, L-A-T-V-I-A, Latvia. Then U stands for a country called Ukraine. The problem of the war is based on the border between these two countries. Then we have a country called Estonia, E. And finally, we have Finland. So this is your current affairs news article that a larger segment uh, that Finland has one of the lengthier borders with Russia on Eastern Europe and Finland has been admitted as part of NATO. Now, good number of students again make a mistake here because they miss an important Russian territory. Let me zoom in and show you. If you look carefully towards Eastern Europe, you'll find a very, very small yellow mark and this would have been indicated as Russia. Please remember, this territory was integrated as part of Russia after Second World War. This place is Kaliningrad. So this was part of uh, Germany. And uh, after the Second World War, when Stalin went for negotiations, he made sure that this territory was integrated into the Russian Federation because Russia was apprehensive that they needed access to the Baltic Sea. And if Russia could have this territory, they definitely have access to Baltic Sea. So please remember, when they talk about countries bordering Russia from the western side, especially Eastern European countries, it doesn't end with these five countries which I've already spoken about. That is B, L, U, E, F, blue, right? You have to add two more countries. The two countries are one more L country. Just like we had Latvia bordering proper Russia, you had Lithuania. One more country called Lithuania bordering Russia. And of course, we have Poland. So when you talk about countries from Eastern European side, please don't make the terrain prelims because it's a normal question, no? Consider the following countries. They might give you five or six countries. So which of the above countries border Russia? Select the answer from quotes below. So apart from the five, please remember two countries. I'll repeat again. One is Lithuania and the second is Poland. Now, we progress towards the Eastern side because since Finland and NATO is the news, we're expecting questions from Baltic Sea. So we just talk about that. So this region is again bordered by several countries and for this again we are going to have a simple mnemonic. Okay. So here we go. I am going to write it down and then we will fill it up. Right. There it is. So these are the countries which border Baltic Sea. The first country is G as you can clearly see. First is uh, Germany, right here. So, Germany borders Baltic Sea. The second country is R. And please don't get confused. This is not proper Russia. This is the small province of Russia, which I actually called as Kaliningrad. The next, we have L. L for a country called Lithuania. Okay, I think you have uh, pretty much gotten familiar with this one. Then D. For the first time, we are talking about a country D. Please remember, Denmark actually has access to Black Sea because it's an archipelago of islands. If you want me to zoom in right here. So this way you have Denmark and Denmark has access to Black Sea. So never ever forget that Denmark is actually a country which borders this particular territory. So to recollect, I've written G, which stands for Germany, R, which stands for Russia, Kaliningrad, L for Lithuania. Then we had T, D for a country called Denmark. Then I have written uh, one more R in this particular case. So this is for this. Part, this is for completing the mnemonic. Then we have a country P. P for a country called Poland. Then we have second L. Keep this in mind. The second L is for a country called Latvia. E for a country called Estonia. And then F for a country called Finland. Finland is right here. Okay, so S for a country called Sweden. So as I told you before, the idea is to make sure that you uh, fill in as much as possible and then you try to replace it with mnemonics. So here we go. Just give me a moment as I try to fill in the vowels. Huh? You always use vowels so that you don't get confused. So here we are going to use an A, girl, G-A-L, right? Hold on, there seems to be a problem here. Yeah. There it is. Gal. And I'm going to use the word O, the second vowel, and then one more vowel A. So idea is girl drops leaf. So gal drops leaf. Okay. So all you have to remember is for Baltic Sea, this is the mnemonic. 
this is the mnemonic you remember the mnemonic there is no confusion on remembering the countries again so now let's go countries which border baltic sea gal drops leaf just remember that this e alone stands for a country even though it's a vowel g for germany l for the first country called lithuania d for a country called denmark r for kaliningrad russia p for a country called poland s for a country called sweden l for the second l country that is latvia e for a country called estonia and finally f for a country called finland keep that in mind they have already asked last year question regarding ukraine so if by any chance upsc is going to run out of questions towards the ukraine side this is the area they are most likely to ask you a question so never ever forget this on countries which border baltic sea now we are moving further west now why further west because last year in 2023 there was a conference called north sea conference and in this conference most of the countries which are present here that is united kingdom uh, norway for example denmark germany they wanted to really invest in green energy especially solar power and wind now this is the news behind it again telling you the context why did they actually start this conference because if you recollect the issues because of the invasion or the conflict between russia and ukraine on the eastern side many of the western european countries are in an ethical dilemma because for energy purposes they still rely on russia's natural gas imports that is one major problem so these countries want to make sure apart from natural gas imports they have their own energy which is possibly generated from renewable sources so that is why the north sea conference was in the picture and this time there was very good attendance and they were looking at uh, investments in this region also so please remember that north sea is again an important region and they could be asking questions on islands which are present in north sea and possibly in the norwegian sea and arctic also so i want to bring about three major islands which are present here the first is faroe islands so faroe islands belong, belong to the country of denmark if you recollect uh, denmark had uh, several let's just say uh, missions several voyages in the north and norwegian sea in the 18th century so through that uh, they have conquered territories as far as uh, greenland greenland belongs to uh, the country of denmark this happened in 18th century so similar to that many other islands were captured so this territory uh, faroe islands belongs to denmark it doesn't technically uh, even though it is autonomous for most of its finances and defense purposes it comes to denmark the second island which is not mentioned in this map but relevant for exam is a part of uh, united kingdom is shetland right here this one okay which you find the north of great britain shetland s h e t l a n d shetland islands belongs to uk and the third and final one which is which technically closer to arctic sea is this walbard s v a l b a r t so to recollect faroe islands for denmark shetland islands for uk and swalbard you cannot forget swalbard because uh, this has the northernmost inhabitable inhabitable place on the earth which is technically inside arctic circle and uh, this is one of the important tourist locations also and that belongs to norway so now if you could remember we uh, started with the middle eastern region right we discussed about persian gulf then we moved towards mediterranean sea then we discussed about uh, black sea then baltic sea then north sea so there is a good possibility of questions in either of these water bodies because of the events which happened here now i'm going to take you to one water body which is again in news and uh, this is again with reference to iran because during the earlier discussion i did tell you that iran uh, is the only country which borders both persian gulf and caspian sea and as part of that we have the instc which was in news twice last year instc stands for international north south transport corridor we do not know whether it will completely come into picture but the idea is uh, it is supposed to be uh, let's just say a multimodal uh, method of transport or connectivity between uh, regions of the baltic sea you know how far baltic sea is and uh, the arabian sea so technically india wants to be a part of the project india is considered to be a serious member of this project because we want to access uh, the uh, central eastern and central european nations through caspian sea by bypassing the suez canal just having uh, one more transport corridor so keep this in mind as part of this corridor it is important and essential that you know how cas which countries border caspian sea because this is how your transit transit corridor is about to operate starting from mumbai 
you reach your Chabahar port, which is getting sponsored uh, by India in Iran. So from Iran, you reach Caspian Sea. Then through that, goods are transported to Azerbaijan and then to Russia. And from Russia, it is taken to Moscow and then Moscow to Baltic. So, so this is the corridor which is planned. So this understanding or this news article technically makes the countries which border Caspian Sea possibly an important question. So keeping that in mind, again, as I told you, mnemonic for Caspian Sea, just to remember which countries border Caspian Sea, just remember the word or the name Karthi, that's all. K-A-R-T-I, pretty simple. K stands for Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan, one of the largest countries in the world, one of the largest countries in the world. A stands for a country called Azerbaijan, please be careful, not Armenia, I'll tell you again. Georgia, Armenia and Azerbaijan are three small countries south of the Caucasus Mountains. Georgia borders Black Sea. We have already seen this, Sea Burger. Azerbaijan borders Caspian Sea. But if you take Armenia, Armenia is technically a landlocked country. Okay, even though Azerbaijan is also a landlocked country because Caspian Sea is technically a lake. But please remember that Armenia does not have any coastal boundaries. So this A which you find right here is for the country of Azerbaijan. R for Russia. T for a country called Turkmenistan, Turkmenistan and finally I for Iran because the entire discussion was based on Iran having the border in both Arabian Sea or towards Arabian Sea and Caspian Sea. Please remember one more important point, Russia has the, what well, let's just say title of being the country which borders both the Black Sea and Caspian Sea. You can clearly look at the map that is not possible for any other country, Iran doesn't do that. Georgia doesn't do that, Armenia doesn't do that, but Russia is something which straddles over both seas, which again makes Russia one of the important uh, leaders when it comes to expands and connecting between different areas. So you've seen Russia for uh, Caspian Sea, we've seen Russia for Baltic Sea, we've also seen uh, Russia's importance uh, uh, for Baltic Sea, Black Sea, and then finally Caspian Sea. So that pretty much sums up uh, the discussion in the Middle Eastern region, moving towards your Eurasian region, and then finally your Eastern European region and the North Sea sector where you can actually get questions.